I'd now like to move on to something very different. Um, this is a different, this is a very different type of a case study. Um, oh, I did say it's in a fairly tricky sector. It's also a sector of lots of opportunity and currently lots of growth in the mining sector. And so I'm going to move over now um, to uh, the case study from Exaro and their small supplier, not so small any longer, MB Resources. Um, what, what really excites me about this, this, this is a case study of catalyzing rapid growth. Not only rapid growth of a new uh, small supplier in a, in a really major industry, but a woman-owned business at the same time. And so, what's exciting here is that they they won um, uh, MV Resources won. Uh, I think it was called the Radical Growth uh, um, SME Award. So not just being a good supplier, but actually being a supplier that has shown exceptional growth. And over the period of in question, uh, Lerato, um, uh, Lerato's uh, company, Lerato Lakata, um, her, her company grew by, by over, uh, over 300%. So this is really a, a, a very exciting case study, lots of different lessons to be learned. So I'd like to hand over to Lusapo Njenga. He's the manager of supplier development at Exaro, and he will dovetail with Lerato Lalaka, who's founder and CEO of MB Resources. Take it away for us, uh, Lisapo. Over to you. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks, Catherine, and good afternoon to everyone. I hope I'm audible. Perfect. Yeah, and I think, um, firstly, I think thanks for um, inviting us to reflect on the journey we've walked with MB Resources as Exaro, but I also think it's an opportunity for us to also learn and, and, and sort of sharpen the program that we do with the objective of creating impact in the areas that we operate on in and, and beyond. So what we'll be sharing with Lerato, who I'll be co-presenting with, um, is just basically, um, firstly, an, an, an overview of, of who Xaro is. I think a lot of people would, would, would know, some wouldn't know who Xaro is. So it's just taking you through what Xaro does, our rationale um, for ESD program, and just some of the learnings we've, we've made um, as a result of COVID, how we've intervened um, around COVID to ensure that the guys We've supported continue to survive and thrive. I will then hand over to Lerato, who's um, going to introduce um, her company, MB Resources. She's the CEO of MB Resources, just to take us through what the company is all about and some of the work, some of the pioneering work they've been doing at, at one of our latest mines. They were working at our flagship large mine, um, Potafelek in Lipala and Limpopo, but they were one of the, so we then recently opened a mine, I think, in 2018, 2019. And they were one of the first contractors to break ground at, at that mine. So one of the first guys to actually get, get caught out off the ground at, at that mine. And we've just really seen the company scale up in terms of um, in terms of growth in the last couple of years. It's a company that we're very proud of. We've profiled them a lot as much as we can. For example, one year we had Capital Markets Day where Exaro presents its strategy and plans um, to investors. The Roto was invited to share an, audi an, audi uh, an audience with, with investors where to get through the work that the company is, is doing for us. But also as part of our Supply Excellence Awards, there's been recognition in that area as well. So it's a company that we really acknowledge and are very proud of, of as Exaro. Then towards the end, we'll just also share on the current state of the partnership and, and, and where we see this relationship um, going going forward. Yeah, just to um, give you an overview of, of, of Exaro. So Exaro is a, is a publicly listed, similar to, um, to the Stealth Black Empowered uh, Mining Company. So our, our program is, is quite deliberate in that there is prioritization of, of suppliers from, from, from host communities so as much as possible. And we take our cue from, from our supply chain um, processes where there is a bias towards businesses from host communities, black owned, black youth owned, and black women owned business, which is aligned to the principles of the mining charter as well as the broad based black economic empowerment. And so there's alignment to that and a really at a progressive um, level, trying to ensure that you're getting more and more um, suppliers and contractors in these in this, um, demographics that are previously um, hard to get into our supply chain. But also more importantly, making sure that we get businesses that are involved in the, in the core mining activity. And MP Resources is an example of such a business that is involved in the actual core, um, core business of, um, of, um, of, of mining. And then um, just looking at, um, at, at, at what we are, what we are trying to, um, to solve as, as, as the ESD program. So one thing we picked up is supply chain on their side, there's, 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 there's policies and there's, and there's initiatives that really try to bring in um, con first time contractors in demographics like black owned, black women owned and black youth owned businesses. I think everybody is aware that mining is a very capital intensive industry. You need assets to operate 
if you're in logistics, you need trucks that cost millions, for example, whether it's moving um, the overburden or moving moving the coal, whatever it is, but you really need um, access to operate. So, And we, we saw um, good success. Companies were, were getting contracts, um, coming on board on the program, getting support in the form of grants or, or, or zero interest loans, and really being able to to survive and, and repay their own obligations, employ people from most communities, subcontract work to other businesses. So really did see um, this paid forward principle then uh, that were on our program. I'll then head over to Lerato who um, introduced MP Resources, which is one of our premier contractors and the work they've been able to do and, and how the ESD program has, has enabled the business to grow um, to the level that it is at today. Thank you. Over to you, Lerato. Thanks, Mustafa. Um, MB Resources, we've, we were born uh, 2013. You know, some of the delegates were not here, so I'm going to repeat what I said the other day because I'm very proud. We received the contract, the letter that we, we get, we got the contract um, in November, December, we go to the site, the so-called site. And uh, I've seen sites before, I've gone to sites, but when I got there, I found a bush, right? And uh, came with an, uh, um, an excavator to come and debush. I said, uh, basically, it is, it is such a moment, it's such a moment to be proud, it's such a moment to be an SMME, a SMM, SMME that says, you want to be an emerging, an emerging contract management, and you are there, and for the first time, right. So um, that was it. And um, two months after, after um, uh, getting the contract, we also received 25 million um, um, fund from ESD. I'll talk about it later. And then we bought. Um, Three, four ADTs, and uh, which we said we started and added to our fleet, and then we started employing. Currently, we've uh, we've got 400 local. Like he said, we've got the CEO Choice Award, and uh, if you look at our year timeline of our Belfast year, it's been great. It's been one achievement after the next, and really it proved that. If you want to see yourself emerging, you can actually do that. And really, we're happy with the first year uh, at Belfast. And we see the 25 million that we got uh, from ESD being one of those underpinning um, our success in that year. So while, while, while the case study focuses more on what we've enabled through financial support um, to MP resources. It's, it's basically one element of our perspective on, on ESD support where we try and be as holistic as possible. And what we've picked up over, over time is that non-financial support is as important as, as, as financial support. And to this extent, for example, around, <laughs> around the mining space is to engage the original equipment manufacturers and see how they can come to the party because it's in, it's, in, it's in our shared interest to them to ensure that we develop successful and growing mining contractors because as a company like MP Resources grows, they will require more equipment, which basically means they go back to the same OEM to purchase equipment. So it's really this three-way relationship where the OEM is, is just as important in providing some of the, some of, some of the support um, to, to some of the companies that, that, we, that we are working with. So I'll hand over back to you again, again, Lerato, just to maybe give us... Um, a view on some of the, like on the current stage of, of, of where MB Resources currently is, and some of the some of the work you're doing to pay it forward, um, which is in line with Exaro's principles of, of power and possibility. I just want to go back to a uh, perspective on what you said on nine financial support because uh, if you look at this contract, it's a huge overwhelming contract in uh, the size of a company of uh, MB Resources. So. Uh, we went there, we get there, and uh, we had challenges with community, we had challenges with people that we 
were employing, we had uh, IR challenges. And when you talk about non-Chinese uh, financial support, that's the kind of support we got when, uh, uh, with Exaro. So I agree with you, it goes further than just giving us money. It is support that some of the things, you know, the risk management and risk mit mitigation that we thought we had, it was not enough. It was not enough and um, we needed support. And Exaro was able to hold us by hand. It, it just that encompassing. So it's not just the money, it's just holistic support. It's, it's August 2021. We found ourselves being the sole contract miner, contract mining company in Belfast. And um, our scope of works has doubled. Isn't it another achievement? Again, we keep going, we keep growing. And we still think, um, you know, the ESD support, the ESD soft lending, that helped us. I mean, we started there and then they got us four machines. And when you get that, um, uh, he said earlier, it's not easy getting funding from banks. Either you have a contract or you have um, uh, equipment. So uh, now we are bankable. Uh, even those banks that could not even look at us, now we look good. We, our production growth, if you look at it now, from 1.2 per month to uh, three whole uh, tons per month, that's another major contract, uh, sorry, um, uh, production uh, growth. And we make sure that we mine safely. We mine safely, we have not had fatalities, obviously that's not what anyone wants, but uh, we, we, don't, we haven't had any injuries in Belfast at all. But in the entire, the whole overall uh, MB resources, we have 3,647 days without. So we mine safe tons at all times. We have, again, we have the current status is that of the, the three, um, the 3 million tons, 30% goes to our subcontractors. And then those subcontractors, um, two are women, and then they are all youth. Um, I think that's such a, that's such a, a, a testimony uh, to the fact that you really there um, to, to share the benefit. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons that uh, you've been chosen by XRO. Uh, uh, we've committed ourselves to XRO that within the project or before the project uh, ends, we would have spent 135 million procuring from local um, uh, suppliers. So which is a big one. Uh, we are uh, monitoring it every month. So that as well, it's, it's, it's one of those that we making sure that we are um, achieving or we are making towards our commitments. And now maybe not so much. I mean, there must be huge stress that's come along with this kind of growth. Do you want to just comment on that? Um, I think the first picture that you need to see is Belfast mine before and after the bush and now the mine that produces so many tons. But if you look at the picture that you have uh, there and this one, you will see um, the stress that has gone. But uh, you're right, it's, it's not an easy road. Um, it's, it's, not, it's, it's stressful. There are a lot of things that uh, happen that you haven't anticipated. So one won't lie that uh, you have not had a client that's not happy. Uh, you've had uh, weather that is more um, uh, rain that is uh, more un um, anticipated or unanticipated than uh, many other years. So it's really, really, it can come that way. And like Lusapo said, we've had COVID and we've had to uh, request payment holidays, not just from Exaro, from other funders as well. So um, it's it's not um, been easy sailing. Uh, I I I can I can absolutely believe that. And I think before I'm going to go through, there's a question from Craig Vaughan. I'm going to go to, and then after that to uh, to Charles. Um, how long had you been in mining before you you uh, were selected for this growth path? Um. I said we started in 20, uh, 2013, 
and then uh, we were through um, Anglo incubation. So it was three years before we got a proper um, contract mining project that that was ours. So uh, basically it was three years. Um, yeah, with those three years we were uh, working with junior miners. Thank you, thank you. That's a, that is definitely a rapid growth. Um, also from Craig, um, the question to you, Lesapo. Uh, what made you select uh, Lerato for this uh, this support? What particularly stood out for you that made her a good opportunity to, for you to invest in? Okay, yeah, I think I think everything starts off with the procurement process where we made a conscious decision that you're going to be as transformative as possible at the Belfast mine and really involve black owned, black youth owned and black owned, um, black women owned businesses in the core mining activity. So through a competitive process, MP resources was selected to do some core mining work. For example, at the same mine, all of the core logistics is given to black women owned businesses. That's a conscious decision we make. We make those decisions aware that these company, these companies might not have the required assets to, to successfully execute, but they really show potential in terms of executing the technical capabilities within the business. So it was for us to ensure that MP resources is set up to succeed as much as possible. And one of those ways was to provide them with the assets they need to operate the business as opposed to them working from a back foot where they don't have any assets. They have to lease assets from someone else at a high at a high leasing rate. So it was really to try and make life as easy as possible for them to, to succeed on the, on the contract. But it's within a broader context of transformation, which is at the heart of what the company strives to do. Thank you. Uh, thanks uh, uh, for that uh, for that feedback, um, Lesapo. Um, and before I go to Charles, I just also wanted to say that uh, XRO were winners of the Newcomers Award two years ago in the ABSA Business Day Supply Development Awards. And it was very clear, they were clear winners in that year. And the reason for that was because it's very, very determined, very well articulated intention to diversify, to diversify the income and to really make sure that they leave value behind in the host communities. And I think this is real evidence of a well thought out strategy uh, that's being implemented. As I just wanted to contextualize that. Um, Charles, go ahead with your question. Thanks, Catherine. Quick question for Lesapo. Lesapo, in your presentation, you made reference to the fact that you guys made a conscious decision to help the existing companies on your beneficiary list. Um, and that would be the focus area. Did you receive any resistance internally and externally when sort of that focus was there? Because it's always a difficult thing when you decide to focus on one pool of customers or p uh, clients relative to another, because I imagine you also get a lot of pressure from other companies wanting to come into your supply chain. Yeah, it, it, it was it was a, a tough sell chart. So I think everybody wanted to try and save the world when 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 COVID did. And what, what we took to the to the ESD committee was saying there's about um, 50 plus businesses we have, not because some of these guys have got loans, want to secure loans, but you can you can have an approach of trying to assist a thousand people, and maybe ten of those guys will make it through, or you can just focus on these 50. And these are and I mean if you look at the employment, a company like MB Resources on its own is about 400 employees. So if you can secure a company like that, there's 400 families down the road that that you that that you that you secure. So once we presented the numbers and said these are the families' lives livelihoods at stake if you don't really support and, and future proof these businesses and sort of and secure these businesses through that. So once you sold um, the secondary effect from an employment point of view, and what companies what some and also some of these companies had made commitments to support during COVID, providing masks to schools and, and food parcels to families that are destitute. So we presented that whole picture, which also presented the guys we're supporting as companies that want to, to pay for it in terms of uh, in terms of COVID support. But we took a decision not to try and save the world, but to try and save these 50 plus guys, because some of them are really doing important work for us as a business as well. And seeing them go under would have had an impact on the business. Uh, thank you, Sopo. That's a nice crystallized uh, view. Um, that you've shared there. Thank you so much. Uh, Michal, um, did you want to ask a question? I, I actually wanted to ask a question that Lusapu just answered in terms of the, the employment uh, within the, the, the organization. And I think the comment I wanted to make, uh, if there are any corporates on the call, I can't really see. Um, this is 
an absolute perfect picture of what supply development should look like. Um, from, from the commitment to the supplier through a supply contract, together with the funding, together with the non-financial uh, support, uh, together with the access to market, and then obviously the monitoring and evaluation which comes at the end. Uh, how have we impacted the community and what has this done? Um, so just uh, an encouragement to corporates that are keen to participate this year, firstly do. Uh, and secondly, please show us all of these. Uh, this, is, this is how it's meant to be. So, so well done to you, Lerato, as well, for women in this sector. Wow. Uh, congratulations. You've done well. Yeah, lovely, uh, lovely, Michal. Absolutely second that. And did you have uh, maybe some, some comments that, you, that particularly jumped out from this case? Um, Mikhail literally took the words out of my mouth. Um, I wanted to say that uh, congratulations to Xaro for a full-blown commitment to uh, developing a, a partner. But uh, these programs can be sometimes really uh, can depend on one, just one angle which doesn't work well. Uh, it could be material, it could be financial or non-financial. And uh, if the uh, corporates are to commit, they need to commit to the full extent as as as, uh, as Xara has shown now. Uh, that's all my comment. And uh, Lerato, don't worry, uh, the, the, the stress didn't do you too bad. That can tell you. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Christian. You get extra points for that, Christian. Um, perfect. I don't know. We have uh, Elmery. I don't know if you're able to, uh, you if you're still able to be with us. Yes. So she has a question from Elmery. Are there any plans from Xaro to support the development of Lerato suppliers? Now that's very interesting. Is there a downstream support plan, um, Lerato? Are you are, have you got a downstream support to help the suppliers uh, to you? Um. I don't know if Lusapa wants to take that one, but um, the 30% subcontractors I told you about, as it is now, um, they are applying for ESD for themselves now. And um, uh, uh, when I say as it is, we are helping them. We are just making sure that they also get uh, ESD. And then we are also, like I said, developing them to be contract miners. So that's how it goes downstream. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. There is a question from the from the delegate panel. panel. Uh, Chai, you have a you have your hand up. Would you like to go ahead with a question? Uh, thank you, Catherine, um, and, and thank you to everybody um, on the call, um, your panelists as well. I made uh, uh, an opportunity to shout out to Elmarie earlier on. Um, my question is for both Lusapo and Lerato, Lerato in particular. Um, I'm also in the, the SME development space. So my question to her would be, uh, she has received financial and non-financial um, support, with, which is fantastic. What, in her opinion, is still missing and can, can, go, um, can take her further? Thank you. Mm. Over to you, Lerato. I don't know. I don't think you can grow much faster than you're growing at the moment, but maybe you've got some plan in your mind. Eh? <laughs> yeah, no. Look, our funders, they still, they still um, have worries that we have one customer. So when you say go further, uh, it's perhaps looking, uh, looking for business or developing our business uh, elsewhere. It doesn't have to be just um, exaro because uh, risk is risk. So for us, it's just to mitigate. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the answer I can give you. Nice one, Lorato. And that's quite a big leap. Eh? It's always quite challenging when you have a massive contract. Um, you're so busy. Uh, you're so busy serving your one client. It does take a deliberate strategy to diversify. So I think yeah, you probably you probably uh, dropped the nail on the head there. Yeah, good luck with that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it.